Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to make a beautiful multi-strand graduated pearl necklace featuring the Potomac's pearls in a couple different sizes. I'm going to go over how to use actually a dragon thread to string your pearls and how to make the difference in measurement work for you. That way they sit actually cascaded like this design. Cheryl put this one together for you and I'm going to be making a nice blue one. Remember if you need any materials go ahead and look below the video in the description and we'll get links there to all the products that are used. So for this design we are going to be using two three and four millimeter Potomax pearls. The pearls will go right from the two to the three to the four, and you can see that they're very graduated looking. So it's not actually going from a two to a two and a half, to a three to a three and a half, three and a half to four, four and a half, and so on. It's just that gradual change in one millimeter that really lends itself to this nice, beautiful cascade of beads. In the design, we are, like I said, going to be using dragon thread. With my blue pearls, I'm going to use my green dragon thread, and I have a size 8. At the ends, we are going to be using wire guards. And we're going to be squishing down the wire guards, making them just a little bit smaller next to the shoes, with our needle nose pliers, making three strands, and then attaching them to jump rings and adding the clasp. You can then make an extender chain with those jump rings if you want to, to make the necklace go even longer. Our first strand is going to be 16 inches, 17, and 18 for our final strand. If you do want to do this necklace design, you are going to need two strands of both the three and the four to make it happen. So before we even start out, what I want to do is give you the counts for the actual lengths of beads and the number of beads that were used. So if you're doing the shortest strand, you are going to, that's the 16 inch strand, have approximately 30 of your twos. Then you're going to increase to your three millimeters with 20 of those. And then in the middle here, the fours, we have 25. When you go to your next strand out, you can see they lay right all about the same. So you're increasing really the number of the larger strands more so than the small strands, or the small beads rather. Your second strand, you're gonna look for 32 of your two millimeter. Then you're in, going to increase to 24, so four more of the uh, three millimeter than you used on the previous, and then 35 of your four millimeter beads. Next, you're going to have on your longest strand approximately 34. So when we came to two millimeters, we had 30, 32, 34. Our three millimeter on this outer strand is going to be 26. So we went from 20 to 24 to 26. Then on the interior, we do a jump and we're gonna do 40 of our beads there. So we started with 25, originally of our four millimeter on the shortest strand, 35 going up and increasing 10, and then 40 on our longest strand to increase as well. So this strand and these counts really do sit perfectly one in another and feel free to use those same exact counts if you want to. I've already gone through and done two of my strands here of my turquoise, doing a little bit different here in the counts and the lengths just to change it up a bit. And I'm going to get ready to do my final strand. So you wanna have available and ready to use your wire guards as well as your beads and your thread and needle. When it comes to wire guards or wire guardians, you are going to want to actually pinch them closed a tiny bit. So here I have my wire guard, and you can see that it's open a fair amount at the end. Go ahead and take your plier very gently and just pinch that closed so it's more of a teardrop rather than that horseshoe. If you've already done them and you didn't have pliers handy, you can, after the fact, go ahead and pinch them closer in as well to the design. It's always beneficial if you can do it before the design. Do one and then do the other one as well, going in and just pinching it a little bit closer together to get that teardrop versus the horseshoe shape. The reason we're doing that is because our final bead that we're using is a two millimeter bead, so it's fairly small, so that way it looks like our wire guards are coming straight out from the middle of that design. To begin my strand here, I'm gonna go in and grab my wire guard. I'm gonna take my wire guard up through the side 
and then I'm going to go down through the other side. And that's going to put the thread right in the middle of that U. We're going to reinforce doing the exact same thing, taking my thread and needle from the one side, the left side that I'm coming out of, back up through the right side, and down the left hand side. Now my tail is there and I'm gonna get rid of it right away. So to get rid of it right away, I'm gonna take my thread ends here and I'm gonna tie my tail to the thread that I'm using. If you want to, you can reinforce by taking your thread back through your entire pearl stranded project and come back and tie that end. I'm not going to bother to since Cheryl didn't do that on hers either. The string and the thread is hefty enough and flows nice when you're stringing the pearls on. Go ahead and burn down that little thread starter edge. Burn down this little end flush or flush towards the project, burning it down, and then get ready to string. Now we're going to start our string on our pearls. This is a little helpful hint as you're going in and doing the design. Often when you're using something like a beading needle and thread versus a silk thread, you can oftentimes string on your beads by putting your needle and thread through them on their previous string, push down half an inch or so, take those beads, slide them down your needle, and pull the thread out from the interior of those. Those beads then will just slide right on. So you don't need to take them off the string. As I'm doing this, I'll generally go through and burn that string that they're on down a little bit to make it easier to do that transfer. So once again, I'm gonna take my needle and thread. This is a nice little trick. Go through, push a bunch of beads on. And I'm using a size 10 English beading needle. Just kind of push those beads down a little bit. Once again, push them down my needle and then pull off the extra thread. When you have this design going then, and you're starting to pull all of those beads through, you're gonna get a really great and easy and fast time done with the creation of this design because you can do all of those beads at one time. I'm going to be using up the rest of my two millimeter beads here in equal amounts on either side to see how I can do for my third strand as I go in and transfer one pearl to the other. Once I have approximately 30 of my uh, two millimeter beads onto my needle and thread, I'll go through and I'll get ready to add my six or my fours, sorry, threes, then fours. When you get to the end of your strand, you're gonna take your wire guard here and I've used up all of the rest of my beads using my twos, then my threes, then my fours in the front. And I'm gonna go through that top of the wire guard, bring my thread down through the opposite side of the wire guard. Again, if you want to, you can sew back through all those pearls and bring it back to the start. That's up to you. I'm not going to because the dragon thread is nice and strong. And also I want my pearls to sway nice and easily as I'm wearing them. Go up through the wire guard that second time, bring it down through the opposite edge. And then you're going to knot off your thread. I'm taking my thread and needle around my fingers, around the bottom base of that wire guard, tying once and then doing a needle through that loop that's already there again. I'm gonna pull that nice and tight for a snower, sewer's knot. And I'm gonna do that same thing again, going around the piece, putting that wire guard through the middle here, making a loop, pulling it smaller, sewing through it once, sewing through it twice to make that knot nice and tight. It loops around here, almost like a surgeon's knot. And then we're gonna pull nice and tightly to get that knot close to the project. If you want to, you can sew down through that pearl that's next again. Bring the thread into that pearl, just a tiny little bit pulling, and then burn off the thread end further down. The last thing we'll need to do is go in and put on a jump ring and put my necklace all together. You can also make a two strand, you can make a three strand, you can make a bracelet out of this same technique. Nice, easy start 
with your dragon thread and with your wire guards. As you add your strands onto your jump ring here, it's important to add them in the order in which you want them to hang. So I have a jump ring here and I've gone and added my shortest, then my middle, then my longest strand. I have that jump ring on and I'm going to attach the clasps to the jump ring. It's nice to have a jump ring or two that's holding the clasp together and then connecting to the clasp itself. That way your strands hang a little bit nicer. If you want to, again, two strands, three strands, kind of up to you, put those on with your jump rings and then you can open up your spring ring, your lobster clasp, kind of up to you, whatever you want to attach onto the design. Here I have the clasp that's going to attach onto the jump ring and Cheryl had a nice oval jump ring on hers. I just have the rounded one up here. Closing it up, that finishes off one side. From here on the other side, I'll do jump rings again. And I'm gonna add a couple so that way I have a nice extender chain adding those jump rings together. Remember, anytime you open a jump ring, you wanna open it to the side, slide on your next jump ring, to make your exchanger chain your next two, close that up past where you think it's going to be attached, and then you have three together. The next one I'm going to use, I'm gonna open up and attach it to my three strands in order and then attach it to that extender chain that I'm creating. So whether or not you do a single strand, a double strand, or a triple strand, those three bags of pearls can go a long way. It's really great to see that gradual formation of that graduation with twos, threes, and four millimeter beads using the same color of pearls. If you wanna wear the, the necklaces independently, you can always also do a lobster on both sides and then attach to something like a spring ring that you can, or like a bar that you can clip on to on either side to wear whatever necklaces you want for the day. Hopefully this design by Cheryl and showing you and giving you the exact lengths will help you that you won't feel intimidated at all to grab three strands of pearls and start to make your multi-strand graduated pearl necklace. Thank you again so much for joining me in creating these multi-strand graduated pearl necklaces. You can get these designs and more by going to our website as well. Look below the link in the description to find links to shop with us online. Don't forget also to subscribe so you don't miss other videos from us like this frozen necklace and other great designs too. As always, comment below if you change anything up, if you use bigger size beads, or if you want to make a longer design, put your lengths and your bead counts in there as well. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more inspirational videos from us here at Potomac Beads.